Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. And we got an awesome episode lined up for you today. We're going to get out of your head. We're going to find how to be happier with fewer expectations. I have an amazing guest, Jeff Walliner, lined up for us. Jeff, before we go any further, welcome to the show. Good to be here, man. When you mentioned you had an amazing guest, I'm looking around the room like, is there somebody coming on I don't know about? Are we going to have like a a three-way situation over here? But I guess it's me. So I have to uh, hold up my end of the bargain. But I appreciate that. If it's not you, it's definitely not me. So I don't know the listener. I mean, maybe we skip to the next episode. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I it's was- Rodney Dangerfield right here. That's the amazing guest. Oh, you couldn't. That, that's the guy. That's the amazing guest. So, all right, folks, you're in for a treat. Okay, we'll see. We'll see if we get any commentary out of that. But <laughs> um, no, but I want to dive in because this is it's an interesting topic because when, as we were kind of getting to know each other before we started recording, I, I was confused what you meant by the episode title, but then we started to dive in and it's really just about getting out of your own way, getting re- eliminating your expectations. And that's kind of the secret to happiness, which seems like a no brainer to me. But on the other side, I've definitely been a, a victim of my own expectations. I'm sure you have. That's probably where all this comes from. So help me unpack this a little bit. Like what, what do you mean by, uh, just everlasting happiness by embracing irreverence. So the fun part about expectations is that they're not ours. We think they're ours, but they're actually not ours because you think about our most natural state. Think back to when we were toddlers and we're running around and we're crashing into things and everything is a Picasso for us to paint on and throw stuff on and just have a great time. That's how we once saw ourselves. And that's how we once saw the world. That's the most natural state of interacting with everything. Then over time though, everybody started piling a few different layers on us. Well, this is what you believe, and this is who you need to marry, and this is the kind of job you need to have, this kind of money you need to earn, this is where you need to live, this is where your kids gotta go to school. And it's like the tiramisu starts getting layer upon layer upon layer until we eat it and have a sugar overload and then crash. And we know what the crash looks like. Man, I've been there, I'm sure you have, and I'm sure everybody watching has had that crash at some point where the story of what you were supposed to be is way out of alignment with where you actually are. And you found yourself in a state of of misery. And some are just bleedingly upset and some just going to like deep depression. But whatever it is, if the stories are not aligned, that's where misery is born. Now, the beauty of it is, though, you can unwind that. That's that's exciting to hear, first of all, because, yes, we've all done that, whether it's society's expectations or our own expectations of any situation. Um, I, I find that even when working with our clients, we try not to get too detailed with the outcome of an ex of a situation because that's where expectations come from. You can't plan details of a result because it's just it's impossible. Nobody knows God's plan for the world. So why why are we even trying? So I, how do you how do you go about getting away from those expectations? And I want to I want to kind of take it from both ways. Like let's start with society. Mm-hmm. And then I want to hear your thoughts on your own expectations, regardless of society. Yep. So the first thing, like anything else, I would say, go really deep into your own beliefs and start questioning them one by one. A good exercise to do is to take out a piece of paper. I know we don't do that anymore, but if you still have a piece of paper and you still have a pen, if anybody out there still actually owns a pen, now's the time to put it to work for you. Create a list of the things that you believe about yourself and just write them out. What do you believe? What kind of money do you believe that you should be earning? What kind of job do you believe that you should have? What kind of spouse? What kind of kids? What kind of life do you think that you should have? And then look at each one of them critically, really critically and objectively, and then ask yourself, how did I get this belief? How did this come about? Did I myself decide this is the way I need to do it? And if I did, where did I get that? Because that didn't come out of thin air. What influenced that? And the more you start peeling back these layers, you'll realize none of this is yours. None of this was ever yours. And then you've just taken so much on over time. Now you think it is. And I think you have to be have to have fealty to something which was never even yours to begin with. So the cool thing is, once you can start unraveling that, then ask a next question, which is, 
what makes me happy? What makes me joyful? What makes me deliriously joyful? Like what, what kind of music can I hear that just gets me dancing? You know, what makes me laugh hysterically? What gets me excited? What ideas will have me working at two o'clock in the morning? Because like this lights me up like nothing else does. And then start leaning into that. And that, my friends, that's where the magic is. Not all this. Here's where it is. That's interesting. I was going to say, because when you, when you do the first exercise about your beliefs and you, you analyze them critically, I, I was worried there was no part two because my first thought was like, but then you just question what's the meaning of life. If you, if you analyze yeah. everything and you're left with nothing, what do you, what do you fill it with? So that's a really cool exercise to kind of fill that back in. But how do you go from, you know, you have this belief system, it's on paper, you dismantle it, you reestablish new beliefs, but nothing happens overnight. It, like I, I could do that right now. Would I believe it? I don't know. So what does this process look like to actually step into the new beliefs to, to what makes you happy and chasing that version of you rather than still what you have as a belief system? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. And yeah, you know, it sounds easy, but it is, it's, you know, like anything else, right? It's simple, but not easy. And that's exactly what this is. It's simple, but not easy. So the first thing to do is when you're dismantling these beliefs is check the idea at the code check of, I need new beliefs to fill these. What if you said, I don't need any new beliefs? What if you, and that's a hard thing for us to do because we live by beliefs. We live by, this is how things ought to be. And we, we ascribe that to everything. What if you said just for one day, I'm going to approach everything the same way a child does. Now we're not saying take away your experience in life, your wisdom, that is important. And that will guide you through a lot of different minefields, but take away the idea of how things have to be and encounter things and have a relationship with things just as they are. So if somebody you encounter, like, you know, you're standing online getting a cup of coffee, you know, somebody's acting a little bit, you know, weird in front of you. And, you know, of course you're going to go to that judgment. I believe somebody shouldn't be doing that. And you're going to immediately go to that. What if you say, okay, they, they're just, they just are. And so am I, and it just is, and this is just unfolding. And now how do I interact with it the way, like the best version of me would interact with it? Not the version of me who thinks this is what I ought to do and how I should do it, but just the most authentic, happy, radiant, joyful version of me. How would that version of me interact? And now start applying that to everything. How would that version of me interact with my company? How would that version of me interact with my clients? How would that version of me interact with my spouse? How would that version of me interact with everything that comes across my desk? This is a hard exercise to do, but you start doing it a little bit each day, you're going to find yourself radically, radically transformed. And then all kinds of things will start showing up in front of you. Amazing synchronicities will come into your life. Yeah, I like that. And I, what I'm thinking too is, or my question on that is, is it like a, a set time that you go and do this? Or, you know, some of us have had 30, 40, 60 years of operating under this belief system. You have to interrupt that pattern. So if you're in line at a coffee shop and you start to have these beliefs come up, what's the, how do you check yourself? when they do come up and not just fall back into old patterns? I would do one thing each day and each morning specifically that's a pattern interrupt. So begin by creating new neural pathways. That's the first step because, you know, they always say if you, you know, give what you've always given, you'll get what you've always got. And that's a hundred percent true. So you see this little uh, dartboard behind me here. There's this game that we came up with my company uh, a couple months ago and now we're launching it around the country and it's called Tonger. And the idea was born from a set of kitchen tongs. A literal set of kitchen tongs. Thought, how ridiculous would it be if we just had a set of kitchen tongs and we just took stuff and we threw it against the Velcro dartboard? And while we do it, we say, I am this new character. So you can't be, I can't be Jeff while I play Tonger. Like that's not, it's against the rules. I got to be whoever. So my character, I call myself Florida Man. I put on this weird hat and I say, I'm retired on the job and it's great. And, but once I do that, once I put that hat on and I take a pair of kitchen tongs that are used for flipping meat, but instead I throw a plastic ball at a Velcro dartboard, all of a sudden I have a pattern interrupt in my brain and the idea of who I'm supposed to be and the business I'm supposed to run and the person I'm supposed to be. And that's out the window. Now I'm just present and I'm joyful and I'm irreverent. And that energy then carries into the next thing I do, which is, okay, what's the next business venture I want I get to do? What's the next conversation I want to, what's the next to do item? Now it's a different energy I'm bringing into it. So for those who are talking about breaking patterns, try one thing every day that just interrupts it. It could be brushing your teeth with your left hand if you're a righty. It could be looking in the mirror and saying something ridiculous. I mean, tr truly ridiculous. Something that makes you laugh, something that makes you think. Give that a shot, see what happens. 
That's amazing. I'm sitting over here laughing as you're describing that because A, it sounds like a really fun game, uh, but B, it sounds completely ridiculous, yeah. which is the exact point. So I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm excited to try that out 100%. on my own. But okay, so how do we do this as, as entrepreneurs, as business leaders? Your team is going to start to look at you like you have five heads. So we need to incorporate them into this process because we want to bring them on the journey too. Some people may opt out. I get that. They might not be a good, good culture fit. That's totally fine. But for the people who do want to come with you, mm. who want to experience this joy, this happiness, and get rid of the expectations, what are some ways that we can do this in a team environment um, and, and hopefully not have people give us funny looks along the way? <laughs> That's fair. The I would first lose the fear of funny looks, and that's uh, that's a hard thing too because we're so worried about that judgment or you know what will people think. But of course, we have to walk that thin line too. So you know you don't want to come into a team meeting, especially if you're the leader, and be somebody that everyone's looking at and saying, "All right, it's time. We need to institutionalize it. This has gone too far." Like, all right, how do we organize a coup and get a new leader? We just can't. You know, you don't want to become like you know the Mad King. You know, you don't want to you don't want to go down that road. So there's it's a good point. And there's a real balance to do. So what I would recommend is some kind of a team building exercise activity where people an improv is great for this. So I would highly recommend some kind of an improv or some kind of a scenario. Maybe you all go out to lunch and everybody is just a different persona. Like, you know, who would, who would you always want to be and what would that person do? And you just be that character for like one lunch and you don't talk business while you're doing it. You don't talk about your company. You don't talk about any of it. Create a pattern interrupt and then watch the next thing that comes in front of your plate for you and your team will now be seen through a little bit of that seasoning, I call it, from what just happened in that lunch. A little bit of that residual seasoning will get on. You'll taste a little bit of that Cajun kick on the back end. And now a little bit more creativity is going to find its way in, a little bit more light, a little bit more openness. And this happens gradually, but you'll see it start to build and build and build until eventually you're eating a totally new dish. Mm, interesting. So then I, I go moving forward as the leader, though, helping people – have this transformation in their own lives and especially at work. Cause I, I see immense value in bringing your team with you. Um, how do you, what, what sort of pattern interrupts do you do on a daily basis? Is it something as simple as in this meeting, we are all our alternate persona or cause I mean, we do have to balance like getting work done and being productive. So how do you work in those pattern interrupts to facilitate people to continue along this journey? I would say in a team meeting place, some really random music and i mean really random music like some mongolian chanting or something i mean find something totally wacky and totally out there that nobody would expect i mean something completely out of left field and just have everybody kind of like Wait, what's going on over here and then just say oh sorry yeah screw the playlist all right and then you play it again actually no i didn't mean to play it and you have just have fun with it i would say lean into having fun and i know a lot of environments are very serious and they take themselves seriously but that's where creativity goes to die. That's where joy goes to die. And that's where, I mean, fundamentally, that's where expansion goes to die. You look at all the firms now that are really killing it. And you look at their workspaces and you look at the way their teams interact. The more irreverent the team is, the more ideas are coming out of that organization. The faster they're scaling, the more money they're making. There's a direct correlation to it. So the more seriously we take ourselves and these, these avatars, these characters, these stories, the more constricted we are. So I'd say, Try to lose the fear of, of judgment and what people will think. Lean in, you know, get your, you know, fly your freak flag as, as loud as, and as high as you can, because the more you do that, that's actually a very sound business strategy. I'm on board. I'm over here laughing because, all right, so if you're, if you're watching, you can see behind me, even though it's blurred, our logo at What If is an upside down question mark, but the top portion in green is a play button. We always incorporate play into everything we do. Some people hate it, and that's totally fine, but you can't actually grow or change or, or have fun without play. And if you're not having fun, why are you doing business? That's just my personal philosophy. It sounds like Jeff's on board with that. But I, I love this concept because it is so off the walls, and that's where the creativity comes from. As you're describing all of this, I can't help but picture – Michael Scott from the office. I feel like is, is he just like the picture of what you want every office to look like? <laughs> oh yeah. But now, now imagine Michael Scott with intentionality behind being Michael Scott, as opposed to just <laughs> accidentally stumbling into being Michael Scott. And and now yeah. we're really cooking with oil. Yeah. That's so much fun. All right. This is, this is really exciting. I, I love the idea of just transforming the way the corporate environment looks. And that's why my passion is small business owners, because we can have fun. We don't have 
big HR departments who are going to slap us on the wrist for pretending to be somebody who's offensive and all these rules. This is how you grow your business. Have fun with it. Incorporate fun. Use some of these strategies. So, Jeff, I want to hear before we wrap up, I, I want to hear um, I'm going to put your website on the screen, too. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But give me a transformation story from one of your clients, like maybe someone who was super uptight or just, you know, overburdened with expectations and what they get on the backside or a business owner or something. Give me give me a story of possibility here. So I wrote a roast years ago for an NFL player out in Arizona, and it was his teammates retirement. And this is a guy and I won't give out his name, but he was a household name, multiple time pro bowler. And the guy had a big ego and took himself very seriously, as some of these guys tend to do. And we're working together because he reaches out to me. He said, listen, I know you guys are the ones who write the comedy roast. And, and man, I got to crush it. I got to crush it. I'm going to be up there. All my teammates are going to be there. We're going to have Hall of Famers in the crowd. Like, I got to do this right. I said, OK. So at first, he's locked in. All right, this has got to be funny. It's got to be formulaic. It's got to be this. It's got to be that. I wrote it for him. He bombed. Thankfully, it was the practice round where he bombed. So he didn't actually go on stage and bomb. He gets back to me and said, yeah, I did it in front of my wife. She hated it. I said, all right. Do you know why she hated it? No. And then we actually sat down and talked about it. Turns out he was he had his like three-piece suit on. He was very formulaic. He was very stuffy. And he tried to like deliver like a professional comedian. I said, dude, you're a linebacker. You're not a comedian. Deliver this like a linebacker does. Lean into your linebacker talents. How would you approach something like that? How are you coming after the quarterback on a blitz? He's like, I just come with energy. I said, then come with energy. Do it. Be you. Don't worry about what people think. Don't try to be me. Don't try to be a presenter. Be a linebacker who's delivering the roast. So he went out there and he absolutely slayed it. He brought down the house once he leaned into what was just authentically him. And he stopped caring about what they thought. And the fun part about it, once he leaned into him, what they thought was amazing because he was getting kudos from everybody afterwards. That's so awesome. I love that. You, you just reminded me of uh, something my wife's grandpa used to always say, and it was be who you are and not like them. And that, that quote has always stuck with me because if you just embrace your authenticity, that's what we're talking about. Life just gets so much easier. Don't put these judgments that are usually self-inflicted on yourself because mm. life's not worth living if you're living somebody else's life. Jeff, I love this conversation. This is so important in the business world, especially for the leaders. Be yourself. Now, the daily stuffing.com. It's if you're watching this on the screen, regardless of where you are watching, listening, it's down below in the show notes. I want you to check this out. This is a really cool concept. Jeff, explain this to me a little bit. You're launching it or you have just launched it recently. Yeah. So I uh, just launched it. So I've been a satirist for years and years and years. And I finally decided all this madness needs a home. So what the daily stuffing is going to be is your daily morning shot of irreverent joy. This is a satire site that's going to take you out of the story. That's going to take you out of the seriousness. It's going to take you out of this rigidity. And the reason I'm really putting this out there is because so many of the more established satire sites now have become so polarized that they take themselves quite seriously through comedy. And this is not what the daily stuffing is about. The daily stuffing is unifying comedy about the things that we all laugh about, about some woo-woo concepts too. So if you're into that, you're going to love this stuff. And fundamentally, the daily stuffing is about bringing irreverent joy back to our lives. So the first thing you do in the morning, instead of doom scrolling, don't lie, I know you do it, I do it, we all do it. You pop over there to the daily stuffing, get a laugh, raise your vibration, attack the day from a good, good standpoint, not from a doom scrolling standpoint, but from excitement. I love it. I'm going to go check it out. I'm excited. This was a phenomenal conversation. Jeff, though, I want one takeaway for the serious business owner who takes themselves way too seriously, hates their company, their employees probably hate them a little bit. What is the one thing they need to do right now after listening to this to change all of that and set them on a path of freedom and happiness? I want you to imagine yourself, and you're going to get a little dark here, but this will be helpful for you. I want you to imagine yourself hooked up to machines on the last day of your life. And somebody says, hey, guess what? I have a gift for you. I'm going to send you back into your body 40 years ago. Now, how seriously are you going to take this versus how much fun are you going to have? Mic drop. That, that's powerful. If you don't go do that, you're crazy. So please indulge yourself in that exercise, Jeff. Phenomenal, phenomenal episode. I'm so excited about this. Thank you for coming. For those of you watching, listening, wherever you are, we have amazing guests like this all the time. Jeff, super amazing. 
Go to the dailystuffing.com, learn more about him, and get your daily pattern interrupt. But make sure you subscribe to Harmonious at Lunch so we can see you on the next episode and disrupt the way you think about your business every single weekday. We'll see you on the next one.